Hello everyone, welcome to this special edition of CGTN and this special series of program is called Real Time China. A couple of days ago we started our mammoth trip in the country's capital Beijing and we're going to travel all the way through to the southern coastal Chi Chinese city of Shenzhen which is also the frontier city of China's reform and opening up more almost 40 years ago and today I'm in the central Chinese city of Luoyang and this place is called it's called Longmen Grotto, and it has a history of thousands of years. 30% of the grottos here were carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty around 580, and 60% of the grottos were carved in the Tang Dynasty about in the 7th or 8th century. So, when the uh, Buddhism started to flourish in China, of course, today we're going to talk about Buddhism and we're going to have a taste of Chinese Buddhist culture. And of course, today I'm joined by Ya Fei, who is an expert in this field and a guide. So, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave your comments on Facebook, or Twitter, or Weibo, anywhere, and we'll get back to your questions as soon as possible. So, Ya Fei, would you like to say hi to our audience around the world? Okay, hello everyone. I'm the guide in Loman Grados. Today I will give you some explanation about Longmen Grottoes and uh, like you to experience the ancient Chinese culture in Longmen. Okay, so Longmen Grottoes, they have a long history and then can you first talk about that? Can you talk about the history? I just talk about some, like uh, a, the grotto, 30% of the grottoes were carved in the uh, Northern Wei Dynasty, right? Yeah. That is long history. Yeah. Uh, I will give you a detailed explanation about the lo history of the Loman Grottoes. The Loman Grottoes, it has been built in the Northern Wei Dynasty at the year 493 AD. It has been built from the Northern Wei Dynasty to Northern Song Dynasty lasting for f four centuries to come to all the grottoes here. And also the uh, Northern Song Dynasty, right? Northern uh, Song Dynasty uh, is around 1000 years ago. And yeah. Tang Dynasty. Tang Dynasty, most of the grottoes actually were carved in the Tang Dynasty, like in the uh, 7th or 8th century, right? Yeah. And then, so, can you talk about the differences between the styles when it comes to the styles between these two different periods of time? Yeah. Uh, the sculptures built by the Northern Wei Dynasty looks very slim, like me, has a slim face and a slim figure. In that time, the the central Chinese people they enjoy the slim figure, but in Tang Dynasty, we know Tang Dynasty is a one of the very prosperous time in Chinese history. So in that time, people enjoy the plum figure, and you can find sculptures built in that time. They had a round face and a double chin, and you can find there are several wrinkles in his neck. So you can find the old statues built by the Tang Dynasty around the sixth century. They have a plum figure. It's, it's, okay. it's quite different. That's interesting. According to my understanding, all of the uh, Buddha statues carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty they used to be slim, right? Yeah. Okay, and that really was the uh, ethnic, uh, the standards during that period of time. But when it comes to the Tang Dynasty in the seventh or the eighth century, and they started to change the styles a little bit, right? Yeah. And the figure, the Buddha statues became a little bit plumish somehow, yeah. right? And of course, and we have been talking about that. It's all about theories. And now, if we can give them, if give our viewers a closer look at the uh, Buddha statues in the. Uh, in a mountain, I think that would be a lot better. So, you can see in the mountain there are tons of holes, and in each single individual hole, you can see some Buddha statues, right? A lot of them, most of them actually, somehow has been defaced. So, what is this place? So, can you talk about this place? I can see tons of statues and some figurines carved in the mountain, in the walls. So, can you talk about some of them? Uh, yeah. And in this part, you can find all the small statues and sculptures that were built by the civilians and some officials and even the wealthy person in this part. So I will uh, tell you about why did the Asian people build the grottoes, the sculptures in the mountain. It's a very hard job in that time, you know. Uh, one of the reason, reasons like, the, like this are in that time, uh, in from the 4th century to 6th century, there are uh, several natural disasters and the wars in China. Uh, in that time, people need uh, one of the way to find the spiritual comfort. So the Buddhism meets their needs. In that time, they built sculptures in the mountain. But this kind of form, it was originated from ancient India. Uh -huh. And so we call the grotto the cave temple. 
cave temple. It was first used by monks to do meditation inside. But in China, the, the civilians and the, even the wealthy person officials, the royal families, build their grottoes to pray for health, pray for healthy, wealthy, good luck, safe and sound, and okay. so on. So they used to pray for luck, right? And that's the part of the reasons. Usually, all of the coffee and the money was donated by the uh, local local officials or something. Uh, local officials and civ the civilians, we call them donators. Uh -huh. Donators build their doing their money to build these build money to build the sculptures here to guide the blessing from the Buddha. The, the donors in the fourth and sixth century, right? I know Buddhism actually was introduced to China in the first century from India. Uh, the Buddhism was introduced into China in sixty eight AD in Eastern Han and say because in that time the first Buddhism temple was officially founded in China, in Luoyang. We call that temple the White Horse Temple. The first one, the first temple, actually was in central Chinese city of Luoyang. It is around this area. Yeah. Now the place where we are at right now is the Longmen Township, right? That is not far away from Luoyang, about half an hour's drive, right? Yeah. That is very interesting. So, on the walls, you can see tons of the figures. So, I can see some of uh, the figures over here. I know that we can see the history. We also call the Longmen Grottoes actually the living fossil. Right, of Chinese history because it was yeah, first carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty in 500 AD around that time, right? Yeah. So it actually depicts different parts of the different phase of history in China. Yeah. And over there I can see three little figurines. Yeah. Those are not actually Buddha statues, no. W what are they? Um, they are that, like the witches of the Buddha. Witches? Yeah, yeah witches of the Buddha. For, for, for the Buddha and but for the bodies of her. Okay, yeah. so they serve the Buddha back yeah, then. Yeah, Buddha back then. And so in this place you can find this kind of animal. Mm -hmm. They are lions. lions. Okay, I can see an uh, animal over there, down there. If I give it a closer look, a little animal, something like... It's a lion, right? Yeah, lion. Uh, what's, what, what's the symbol of lion? What does this mean, actually, in Buddhism back then? Um, in Buddhism, lion is a very divine animal. It's like a Chinese long, Chinese dragon. Mm -hmm. It is very much higher than an, any other animals in that time. Uh -huh. So they always cover lion in, in th from the Buddha as a protecting animal to all of the evils in that time. But you know, China has no lion. The lion was, sent or was introduced into China through the Silk Roads. You know, in that time, in Eastern Han Dynasty, Luoyang is the starting point of the Silk Road. Uh -huh. That is interesting. So let's turn the camera around. And this is one of the caves, also one of the most well-known caves. And you can hear my echo, of course, somehow, in this cave. And it, this cave, actually, is very exquisitely carved. And on the ceiling, I can see a lotus flower. And what is this? I mean, the lotus flower has a very long history. What does it mean, actually, when it comes to lotus flower in the uh, philosophy of Buddhism in China? You know, the l lotus is a symbol of Buddhism. In, uh -huh. in, of Buddhism. And uh, in this place, in the grotto, they always choose it as one of the decoration here. Yeah, it's a symbol of pure mm -hmm. in Buddhism. So it is uh, about purity in and lotus, purity in right? Lotus. And, uh, you know, it is according to Buddhism scriptures, it's a sign that when the Buddha Sakamuni was born, He's, he's able to walk around. The, the place where he stepped on, there appeared the lotus. So they regard lotus as a very divine flower in Buddhism. So ever since then, ever since Sakyamuni was born, and lotus flower has become a very important symbol in Buddhism, right? Yeah. And that I can talk about some history about this particular one, this carved lotus flower on the ceiling. is very rare because usually Sakyamuni or all kinds of Buddhists, they usually sit on the Buddha, but this one is like the other way around. Why? It's like the decoration in the Chinese, uh, in the ancient Chinese architecture. We call it, in, in Chinese, we call it Zhao Jing, uh -huh. Lotus Zhao Jing. It's one of the decoration in the architecture. So uh, when they build grottoes, they, they want to build, uh, or make the grotto look much more beautiful. So they choose Lotus as decoration. Actually, we can find there's another decoration outside on the top of these parts. On the top? Yeah, that is uh, like the eave of this cave. Uh, yeah. What is it? You can find so the shape of this thing. It looks like a what? It looks like the flame. It's a flame pattern here. Flame is another, another thing in Buddhism. Yeah, I can see flame. Yeah. yeah, if you can see that throughout camera, you can see flame, the carving. 
What does it mean actually in flame? Flame is very much like purgatory in Western culture. Yeah, but uh, you know, in our world, f flame is another thing which can give us brightness. Uh -huh. So it's like the Buddhism, the Buddhism philosophy can give us brightness uh -huh. in the world. So they always choose it as a decoration. So flame in Buddhism actually they mean a bright future, something bright, something warm, yeah, right? Something warm uh -huh. and, uh, to enlighten us. Okay. To enlighten us, like the like the Buddhism scriptures can enlighten us. Mm -hmm. So, what is a Buddha? Buddha was an enlightened person. Okay, a Buddha is a, like an enlightened person, right? Yeah, enlightened and the flame, it is not purgatory in the usually common sense in Western culture, but here it means the enlightenment, right? Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that is lovely. Okay. And here, over here, if we turn the camera around, we can see two Chinese characters. What do they mean? Uh, we. We pronounce them Yi Chue, Yi Chue, the, the original name of this place. Uh -huh. At first, this place was called Longmen. We call this place Yi Chue because of its location. So now it's called Longmen Grottoes, right? Longman Grotto, but yeah. it used to be called Yi Chue. Yi Chue, yeah. Yi refer to the river. The river. Yeah, this is a Yi River. It's a natural river. It's mm -hmm. about 286 kilometers mm -hmm. going to the Yellow River. So Lomen Grottoes were carved along the Yi River, right? Yeah. And then we have this Yi, this one Chinese capital over here. So how about Chue? What does it mean? Chue means gate. You can find the Chue Mountain look like the gate for we So we call this place Yi Chue here. So basically it means the river, the Yi River Gate uh, somehow, yeah, and river that's gate. the original Ar name of this place. Now it's called Longman right now, right? Okay, yeah. for those who just tune in, for those who just tune in, this is CGTM. We are broadcasting live in different places of China, and this special series program is called the Real Time China. And now I'm in the uh, Longman Grottoes, which has been enlisted on the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2000, right? In 2000. And it has a history, it has a very long history, and 30% of the grottoes actually were carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty, like 500 AD, and 60% of the carvings actually were made in the Tang Dynasty, Tang when yeah. Buddhism started to flourish in ancient China. Tang Dynasty was around like in the 7th, in the 7th or 8th century, right? Uh, so that's just a yeah. long time ago. Oh, yeah, long time ago. Okay, that is interesting. So let's move on to the next uh, place. And okay. so this place, actually, this particular cave was carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty. Yeah, in the Northern Wei Dynasty, this place. Okay. So now we're moving on to the next uh, place yeah. that was carved in the Tang Dynasty, Tang Dynasty in, yeah. the, in the 8th century. Uh, in the sixth, in sixth, sixth century. In the sixth century. Yeah, sixth in the sixth century, century or the seventh century. Uh, yeah, or, or near to the seventh century because it has been finished in six hundred and seventy-five, according to the tablet. Uh -huh. According to the tablet, it was finished around that time. Yeah. Okay. So now we can see. Let's turn around. Let's turn the camera around. Let's turn the camera. If we turn the camera around, then we can see Buddha statues here all over the place different caves. There are all together 2,345 yeah, caves. Yeah, yeah. All together, right? Yeah, all together. But all together. So when you look at this part, so this is Wise Mountain. Now we are in the Wise Mountain. You can find most of the grottoes are carved in the Wise Mountain. Uh -huh. Do you know this why? is the West Mountain. Yeah. And we have two mountains here, right? Yeah, they yeah, check the E River over here. Yeah. So the West Mountain, it has the most carvings here. Carvings here. Okay. Yeah. The West Mountains and then how about the East Mountain actually? Well I don't see many of them over there. Uh, in the East Mountain you can only find the three hundred and twenty three grottoes. But in the West Mountain you will find uh, two thousand and twenty two grottoes. So two thousand twenty two. Yeah. Two thousand and twenty two grottoes here, caves. So how about the Buddha statues? I know I did some research myself. There were yeah, altogether okay. more than 100,000 Buddha statues, right? Yeah, more than 100,000 Buddha statues were carved between the two mountains. Okay, in these two mountains, there were altogether more than 100,000 Buddha statues, and some of them are quite small, tiny ones. You can see that it's carved on the, uh, in the mountain, actually. And some of them, the uh, tiniest one could be only one inch. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. one inch, yeah. In the Gu Yang Cave. How about the uh, biggest one? Biggest one is about 17.14 meters. It's a highlight in Longman. So that is around 70.14 70 70 14 14 meters. meters. So that is around like 20, 27 feet. That is really tall. Yeah. Okay. So where do we go now? 
Now we are gonna visit the highlight of Loma Grados. In that place, you can find the biggest Buddha here. So I can find the biggest Buddha here, right? We are on our way to the biggest Buddha. And of course, here you can see a lot of caves over here. One is a very big, but it's a very dark inside. And some of the Buddha statues actually have been defaced because of the natural disasters, yeah. as you said just now, right? Yeah. Around the uh, fourth or the sixth century, yeah. right? And some of the Buddha statues actually were kind of destroyed in the 1920s. Yeah. So how about this place? I can see, like, let's uh, stop here a little bit before we move on to the biggest Buddha you said just now. So now you can have a whole picture of this place. It's marvelous. You can see yeah. caves yeah. everywhere in the mountain. A lot of them, different figures, and they are very different in size. And I can also see some pagodas, yeah. some stupas. Yeah. Right? So can you talk about this particular place? Uh, in this this part, most of them are covered around the northern Wei Dynasty. Northern Wei Dynasty. So it is. So we are still hanging on around the northern Wei Dynasty, yes, like yeah. 580. Yeah, 580. And uh, in Lumen Ground, you can you can find the the Buddhism sculptures, the grottoes, and the terraces, and even the pagodas. So it's like the the stone coffee museum. Stone Coffee Museum. So it's a very much like a museum, yeah. but an outdoor museum. And this place, I would like to call it a living fossil because I can see like the uh, history in different phases of ancient China, right? And let's turn the camera around so that our viewers would have a closer look at the caves and the statues. And here, this one is quite special. Usually, among all of the other caves, you can only see like a cave and there was a Buddha statue in it. But for this one, I can see a gate for itself. Yeah. What is it? Uh, in that time, I uh, too just like the Lotus Cave. They built the grottoes and they want to. They they also sometimes decorate them. So in this place, they choose the the roof, stone roof, to decorate them. I know you can find there is a bird. Yeah, there is a bird on top. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? It's just an eagle, right? No, no, no. It's a very divine bird in Buddhism. Uh -huh. In Chinese, we call it the Da Peng. Da Peng? Yeah. Da Peng is like, what, what does it mean? Uh, it's kind of, kind of di divine bird. It's divine bird, some kind of really big birds, I uh, think. Really big birds. Uh -huh. And uh, to, uh, in some Buddhism scriptures, it says uh, the Da Peng is the enemy of a dragon. Dragon. Yeah, enemy of dragon. I know, like dragon actually is the symbol of China's royal family. Yeah. Like especially in the Ming and Qing dynasty around 200 years ago, 100 years ago. If you are from the royal family, then you are the descendants of the Chinese dragon, right? And now... In Buddhism, you can find the Da Peng. It's a, it's a very divine bird. They also, also choose it as a decoration. You can find them in the Buddhism niche. In, okay. Buddh in Buddhism niche. That is interesting because uh, I did some research myself. I know this kind of bird. Actually, this bird would feed on would feed on Chinese dragons. Yeah, the Chinese dragons. It's the enemy of the dragon. Okay, but yeah. that is all legend, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is all legend because we don't know if there were any dragons, anyways, in the world. It's probably in the past, but we have no any evidence right now, scientific evidence. But anyways, we see a lot of them in Buddhism or in Western cultures everywhere, right? So now we're climbing the steps and we are going all the way to Verukana, the biggest Buddha yeah, yeah. in Loman Grotto. Yeah. How big is that Buddha? It's the biggest one, 27 feet. Uh, yeah, yeah, 27 feet. But uh, you know, in ancient times, uh, a very tough job for them to go upstairs because uh -huh. there are no steps here. Okay. But in this place, you can find the original steps. Uh -huh. In that time, they carved the steps here in the mountain to go upstairs. Okay, so if we give it a, let's give it a closer steps. look. You can see the original steps over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The original steps over here, very tiny steps. Yeah. Yeah. And they climb all the way from the mountain, from the foot of the mountain to the top of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very hard. And then I think a lot of our viewers must be curious about this. Is it so hard for them to carve those Buddha statues? How do they make it? How do they make it? That is, uh, that was a lot of work. Yeah, I think they built the grottoes and the face of the Buddhism. They have the face in their minds. So it was only about face. 
and oh. they had a faith in Buddhism, yeah. and then they made it yeah. with a lot of money. Uh, yeah, because they were built by the royal families, so they can afford it. And only the can the royal families can afford it. Uh -huh. Only the royal family here, right? Yeah. So now we have officially come to this place. Now, from here, we can see the biggest Buddha statue in Lomen Grottoes, and that one, the biggest one, is around 27 feet, yeah. right? Yeah. And I heard that his ear alone yeah. is two meters long. Yeah, two. What well, is uh, actually his actual height is 1.9 meters about his uh -huh. ear. So the Buddha's ear is around 1.9 meters. Right, so almost two meters, yeah. much taller than me. <laughs> Anyways, so it's, this is a quite a climb, a strenuous climb over here. So, without doing anything, I'm breathless a little bit. So I'm wondering how much work they've thrown into this whole craft. So now we have officially come to this place. For those who just tune in, this is CGTN. We are broadcasting live in Central Chinese city of Wuyang, and this is Lomen Grottoes. This has been listed on the. Uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2000 and it has a very long history 30% of the grottoes were carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty 500 yeah. AD yeah. and 60% 60 were built in Tang Dynasty around the 6th century around the 6th century right yeah. so marvelous and just now we visited some of the grottoes carved in the Northern Wei Dynasty around 500 AD and now we have come to this place so we're going to see something quite different right yeah. just now we said what's the difference between the uh, Buddha statues between these two periods of time again we, we can judge the different st uh, Buddha statues by the, by the figures of the sculpture. By the figures of the sculptures, and you, usually the figures in the Buddha statues in the Northern Wei Dynasty would be... Slim, slim, very slim. Very slim. How yeah. about the Tang Dynasty again? But in Tang Dynasty, they enjoy the plum figure, so it looks much fatter than the Northern Wei Dynasty there. It's quite different. Okay, a little bit plumish, yeah, right? Plumish. So now, our viewers, I think it's time for you to see something marvelous. Uh-huh. Okay, so let's take a look. So can you talk about that Buddha statue? It is so grander and the face is demure and the carving is still, I can still see the carving right now, very exquisitely made. So can you talk about this style? The style of this sculpture is a typical Tang and stay style. You can find this Buddha, the very kind of Buddha, it has a round face and a double chin, and we can find there are several wrinkles in his neck, uh -huh. and all of this sh shows the Buddha has a plum figure. A plum figure. Yeah. It's a plum. I can definitely tell that this uh, face is very plumish, yeah. right? And I can also see some other Buddha statues flank flanking this this central one, right, the biggest one. Yeah. Can you talk about them and the styles and everything? Because our, most of our viewers are very curious about. Those Buddhists around, it's like, who are they? Why did people in ancient China carve the figures like these? There are two disciples, the two bodhisattvas, they are standing around the Buddha. On the right hand, this one is the eldest disciple, it's Kasyapa. This sculpture, it looks very aged, because even though it has been broken by the running water, we can find his skin around his, his, his chin drop a lot. Uh -huh. He's a very aged person. So an uh, aged person, yeah. a senior, senior citizen yeah. in the, in yeah. the past, right? Yeah. Okay, so, and that's the pedestal. If you can see that through our camera, that's the pedestal of the uh, Buddha Sakyamuni, not Sakyamuni, Verukana, right? Verukana, Buddha said, very complicated anyways to explain. Verukana and the Sakyamuni, almost like the head of Buddhism in the past. Yep like the same right and yeah. you said like uh, Virakana is the reincarnation of all another state another of state. Sakyamuni and on the uh, pedestal in the pedestal I can see some other figures but most of the figures have been destroyed or defaced somehow what are they what are they doing here they are the men of great strings they, they support the, the seat of the Buddha so they would support the pedestal of Buddha, right? Yeah. Because they believe in Buddhism. Yeah, they believe in Buddhism. Uh -huh. Yeah. And and some of them look it. very strange, actually. We can't see it right now. And then if we turn the camera around, 
Okay, there are more of them over here. I can see. Let's turn them on to our right. We can see those two. So who are they? One of them, this one, is the one of the heaven king in Buddhism. There are four heaven kings in Buddhism taking charge of the favorable weather. This one, he's the north one. North one, he's in charge of the winds. Of the winds, but we can find there's a very ugly guy on the foot of the, of the heaven king. He's yeah, a, he's a devil. A, uh, he's a devil. If if we give it a closer look, you see. This one, or we call it some kind of god, is trampling on a devil. Devil, yeah. A devil. Yeah, Why? Yeah. This means the justice will always conquer the evil. Okay, so this one is evil, and the justice is Buddhism in the past. So that's the yeah. philosophy in Buddhism, right? So there are tons of them, devils and evil people, oh. or demigods somehow. And then you said it's like they are the gods of heaven somehow. The four of them all together, right? Yeah. And they the are in charge of like the four directions: four north, direction. west, east, south. And yeah, but in China, I think they were. Localized because in China, and、uh, the they are in charge of the favorable weather. So you know, in ancient times, they need a favorable weather to have a have a bumper harvest. So in that times, they can go to the temple to pray for one of them. If they need rain, they can go to the temple to pray for another one of them. Okay, but that is definitely not from Buddhism, according to my understanding. Buddhism actually doesn't have those gods.、Yeah. That is some kind of a mixture between Chinese Taoism and Buddhism, right?、Uh, it's a Chinese Chinese style Buddhism. Yeah,、uh-huh. uh, they are four having having kings in original Bo- India Buddhism, but in China we give them new meaning. Okay, so we have put some. We did in the past the ancient Chinese put the Chinese elements into Buddhism, right? Yeah. When Buddh- New here, definitely. I can see it, the、uh, what do you call it QR code. Yeah, QR we have a QR code, and what is what is that? What is the QR code? You scan the QR. Code. I know that is something that Norman Crossroads have been doing to promote the culture here in this、yeah. place. And then the QR code. If you scan the QR code, what do we get? If you scan QR code, you can you can listen the explanation explanation both Chinese and English version here. And if you follow our WeChat,、mm-hmm. ac- WeChat account, you can you can book the ticket.、Mm-hmm. You can inv- invite the, the guys.、Mm-hmm. Uh, you can book a place to park your car. It's very convenient for you if you follow our WeChat account. So everything has become very digital, right? You have、yeah. to make everything digital, all incorporated into this one WeChat account. And then if I scan it, the QR code now,、yeah. what will happen? So we're gonna have some poetry. No, yeah, you are trying poetry. to yeah, yeah combine poetry and also the culture here. So most of people, a lot of poets, they write poetry on the WeChat account or something, and they post it online, and people could enjoy the poetry about the Roman grottoes, right? In the, and the poetry actually is quite ancient, according to my understanding somehow. And now you are trying to make it live again. Yeah, yeah, because you know.、Um, Nowadays, the, the internet, the WeChat, is very popular in、uh, very popular in China, and、uh, we can use WeChat to make the culture here accessible to everybody, available to everybody. Okay, that is interesting. So, would you like to give it a try? Yeah. So let's give it a go. Let's see what happens if we scan the QR code. So we're gonna have a a poem. Is it working right now? Yeah. It's one of the poetry by a very famous poet. Uh huh. So we have in, like in one China, in China. China. The internet is a little bit slow here, but yeah, yeah finally we have got it. So that、yeah. is a a poem. Poem about him. About about, about, about the, Loman Grotto. Yeah, about Loman Grotto, about the about this Buddha, about this Buddha.、Okay. Yeah. Uh, his name is Yu Guangzhong. The poet, the poet, his name is Yu Guangzhong. So the famous poet, and oh, this poem actually was written in 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very hard to understand, of course, when it comes to poetry. It's very much like archaic Chinese,、yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs>、uh-huh. So、uh, it's another way to en- and to understand and experience the, the culture in Longman.、Uh-huh. 
And because you can find the, the sculptures here, they're very marvelous. But you can't experience the Asian culture here some, to some person. So they, they want to learn something more. So, and, and then they can scan the QR here to, to listen to the poetry here. Okay, so you listen to the poetry and then you get a taste of Buddhism in ancient China, also in modern China, and a lot has been done to protect the cultural relics here. For those who just tuned in, this is CGTN, and we are broadcasting live in Lomen Grottoes. And here, you can find tons of Buddha statues carved in the mountain. There are all together over 100,000 uh, 100, Buddha statues. 300 years ago, this sculpture has been built. Uh -huh. So how about this one? Let's turn around again. Okay, I can see... There's a place, I can see some visitors, but now it's getting emptier so that we can have a better look at the, uh, okay. <laughs> the Buddha statue here. So this one, I said just now, this is the biggest one yeah. in Loman Grottoes, and yeah, this one is around 27 feet, and its ear alone is around 2 meters long, around 1.9 meters. Yeah. Uh -huh. But his hands are gone. Yeah, his hands has been, <laughs> has been broken by the running water. And uh, this part also lies in the moon part of the mountain. You can find holes in, in the wall. In northern Song Dance, about more than 1,000 years ago, the Asian people want, wanted to protect them, uh -huh. so they built a roof. They put some pillars into this hole and built a wood roof to cover them. Okay, so I can see some holes in the wall. I can see some holes. Let's turn the camera around. Let's turn the camera around, then in the wall, I can see some holes, right? Yeah, so they yeah. used to build, in the Song Dynasty around 1,000 years ago, they yeah. built the roof yeah. for the Buddha statues here to protect yeah. them, right? Yeah. But what's happened after that? I don't see the roof anymore. Uh, there's n no straight answer about what happened about the roofs. Maybe they were, uh, they were, ter ter uh, they were broken, uh -huh. naturally. naturally. Maybe it's, um, by some other reasons. Uh -huh. Because the roof was made of wood properly, and yeah, because of weathering. And, uh, you know, in, when you watch, you watch the Buddha stand over a bank, it will influence your eyesight. Okay. So it be teared down. So it was torn down, torn down yeah. or probably by, by us, or it was because of weathering, because the roof was mostly made of wood, right? And over the past years, the course of history and the roof was destroyed somehow, and, right? Uh, and uh, to some reason, they, they are made of a bad effect on the statues here. Oh, on the statues, because they did something for the good of these Buddhist statues, but it backfired, it turned the other way around. It has negative effects on the statues here. On the negative effects on the statues by building roofs over these Buddhist statues somehow, why? Uh, one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons like it uh, will influence your eyesight, and the second, uh, so, uh, when you build the roof, the, the running water can run from the from the roof, mm -hmm. and uh, it they will the running water will destroy the sculptures okay. to some extent. So the rainwater actually probably would ruin the sculptures. Yeah. So if we are uh, if we look, if we give it a closer look, actually, I can see the paintings, right? I can see the yeah. paintings on the sculptures somehow, but I don't see them quite clearly right now. But I can see some remaining colors, yeah. right, on the clothing. So in the past, and now we don't see them right now. So in the past, they used to be colorful. Uh, they used to be colorful. They, they were much more beautiful than nowadays mm. because they were painted with the natural color, uh -huh. such as the red, black, green, mm -hmm. and yellow. Okay, so they used the different colors. And now, so how about the restoration work? I know you have been working here for quite a while. How about the restoration work? Why don't we re-carve those Buddha statues? It's, it's going to be a mammoth work, right? Uh, yeah, it's very hard to re recover them as original, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it it will also made some negative influence on the original sculptures. Uh -huh. So we don't need to rebuild them, rebuild them, but we reinforce some status in Loman Grottoes. So we just leave them the way they are right now, right? Yeah. Because it's yeah. very hard. It's going to be a lot of work, a lot of money, and it's also quite hard because they were carved Buddha statues, right? 
Yeah. And how about the colors? They used to be colorful. It would be a lot easier for us to, you know, paint them once again. No, this color is quite different from the, the ancient. I uh, just now I told you they were they were come from the natural stones. Uh -huh. Yeah, some of them are expensive in, in the ancient time, uh -huh. but in nowadays, uh -huh. we we haven't uh, you know all the original color they use in each sculpture. Okay, that is interesting to know. So it's getting more expensive probably, and it is very hard for us to you know, make the way they were before. For those who just tuned in, this is CGTN. We're broadcasting live in Lomen Grottoes. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave your comments on, we on Weibo or Facebook or Twitter, anywhere. Or you can also find us on the website. And I have got an expert here. He's a guide in Lomen Grottoes. And we'll get back to your questions as soon as possible. Don't forget to leave your comments. Also, don't forget to give us a heart and share a post with your friends if you like our post of podcast here. Okay, let's continue. Let's turn around. Um, let's turn around to the camera so that our viewers will have a better look. So uh, there were tons of them, tons of Buddha statues over here, but most of them here have been defaced, unfortunately. But over here on the top, over here on the top, I can see four of them lining up there yeah. on the wall. They are still intact, right? Very beautiful. It's a little bit reddish. And I know you also. You have also done a lot of research in Buddhism, right? <laughs> so can you talk about the background of the uh, Buddha statue over here? And just now you talked about fire. I can see the fire. And how about yeah. something else? Something else is the decoration of the, of the Buddha sculpture here. And you can find the, the, his, his head circle, body circle, on the back of the Buddha. It's one of the way to decorate the Buddha. And you can find the... the Ananda, Kasayapa, Kasayapa and Ananda, their, their uh, circle is different from uh -huh. the Buddha. So I can see two figures, right? Two figures. So beside, Sak not Sakamuni, but Varukana. And yeah. then they used to be the disciples of Sakamuni, of Varukana here. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That is lovely. And also how about these two? And I think these two they look more exquisitely carved here, yeah. right? The necklaces and also the clothing and everything. Also the uh, posture, the feet, so the clothing and the decoration. Very, very beautiful. So who are they? They are two bodies of us. Two bodies of us. It is, they are like the assistants, assistants of the Buddha. So they are the assistants of the Buddha, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. All of them on our right hands. Mm -hmm. Is in charge of the wisdom. Another one is in charge of the practice. Uh -huh. That that means you should combine uh -huh. them together, okay. you, and then you can become the Buddha. Uh -huh. That is interesting. We have got some comments from our viewers. One Randall, uh, he said that is a lot of caves. I know they were all together. We said like two thousand three hundred and forty-five. Yeah. That is easy to remember, actually. Yeah. To be honest, uh, over two thousand caves. A lot. Yeah, built, uh, carved in the past around 500 AD and also in the Tang Dynasty around the uh, 6th century, right? In the yeah. past. And then, so, and then, so, one viewer is asking how were they carved in the first place? It must be a lot of work. With modern technology, it's very hard. How about people in the past? It could only be harder. Yeah, in that time, it's much harder than our nowadays, you know. They have a very simple tools, such as hammers and drills to carve them. And uh, you can find all the statues here, they are above 10 meters. 10 it's meters? Above the statues. Above the statue. I know the biggest one is around 27 feet, right? Yeah. Definitely above 10 meters. And even the smaller ones, they are still very tall, around 1 or 2 meters tall, yeah. right? So they only used some hammers, very simple and crude tools in yeah. the past just to, to comp these. They built the old scaffolds to go, go up. Okay, so they built some scaffolding, right? Yeah. So that so they can go... Higher, so the and then, then they can make these calves. I know it would be a lot of work, right? Money-wise, I know you said some local officials or the royal family actually they donated money to make these the uh, marvelous carvings here, right? And then how about how many people actually were posed in this? This I would like to call it a feat. 
how many people actually devoted their lives to the carvings? Do we, do we have a number? Do we have an official number here? We have no accurate number about it because there is no record about how many people they used to build this huge project. But uh, in Lomen Grottoes, there is another very marvelous place built by the North Sea. Mm -hmm. That place, in that in that place, they use more than more than one hundred craftsmen mm -hmm. to work in that place for about 24 years. 24 years? Uh, in that place, not in here. That, in that only one place, right? Okay, Particular place, only one cave? Uh, only one cave, only one cave, because in that time, they only finished the mid, mid Binyang cave. Oh. The north and south have been finished until 150 years later in Tang Dynasty. Okay, in so in one cave, that was in the Northern Wei Dynasty, 500 AD, right? Yeah. So they spent 25 years making that only one cave. Uh, yeah. And Around 100 people actually than, were devoted than, to that. More than 100 more people than were than devoted to that particular cave. Yeah. So let alone this one. This one yeah. is the biggest one. Yeah. And we can see like um, like the biggest one is around 27 feet and then there are one, two, th let me see how many of them nine, for nine, nine sculptures here. Nine, nine sculptures here. And how huge sculptures here. Yeah. Okay. That's going to be a lot of work. Yeah, a lot of work, I think. Uh -huh. So for those who just tune in, this is CGTN. We're broadcasting live and what we're looking at here are some Buddha statues carved hundreds of years ago. Thousand, no, no, more than thousand years ago, oh, right? Years ago. Yeah, in the Wei Dynasty and the Tan, Tan Dynasty. Dynasty, and there is a anecdote about this Buddha statue. I learned that online. I don't know if it's uh, if it's real or not. Yeah. Okay. So if we give a closer look, the face of this Buddha, the face. Let's zoom in a little bit so that we can have a look at the uh, plumish face. So the first empress or the first. Empress Wu Zetian, yeah. a female, female yeah, Empress Wu Zetian, right? And then she actually devotes money to make this particular Buddha statue. Yeah. And this one, it is said, was modeled after her face. Yeah, the, to some, in some people's eyes, they b believe in this. Uh -huh. So they because believed actually this one, the face, was modeled after Wu Zetian. Yeah, because in that time, you know, the Empress Wu Zetian, she don't need so much private money here and that money is equal to today's more than one million US dollars you know one million US dollars to make this one uh, so it's only a tiny part of the huge iceberg okay only a tiny part of it one million US dollars yeah. one million US dollars in today's money yeah, right in right. the past and then yeah. the only probably made part of the carvings here, the Loman Grottoes. Yeah. And was a TM made to this one in particular? And that one looks, yeah. So I didn't realize that before. And I realized that actually this Buddha statue, the face is very plumish and it looks very, I said demure is the word to describe the face of this Buddha statue and also quite serene and a little bit woman-like. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. Yes, um, uh, but you know, in in China, in China, in since the north, uh, since the, the Emperor Xiao Wen mm -hmm. made his capital in Luoyang. So Emperor Xiao Wen was around how how long ago? Uh, in he made he made his capital here in four hundred ninety three. I mean, the first year when they built the Lumen Grottoes, mm -hmm. and the Buddhist sculpture in China. Mm -hmm has taken shape of orange there, the Chinese there. Uh -huh. uh, in China, we, in, in the Buddhist eyes, the Buddha is very accessible for, um, for mercy. mercy. Mm -hmm. So they would like to give the Buddha a lady's face. Okay, this, this they, they would like to, in the past, of around 500 AD, they would like to give the uh, Buddhas a uh, like a lady's face. face. Yeah. The lady's face for, for how? Because of Please. mercy, a uh, woman is usually more lenient when it comes to personality, right? So they would yeah. like to make it demure like a woman's yeah. face. And that is part of the reason why this particular one is a little bit like woman like the face is a plumish, right? Yeah, like the face of Wu Zetian. Body seven, they also look like it's a very beautiful and we also see women. Uh -huh. women. In Tang Dynasty. In the Tang Dynasty in, in the Tang past. Dynasty, yeah, you can find they have plum figure and they are several, several 
some accessories around their body. Uh-huh. You can find the some accessories around the body. Yeah, around uh-huh. their body. You can find the earrings and the necklace. Uh huh. And Air- earrings. I can definitely see some earrings over there, right? And yeah. also some necklaces, all around the body actually. And I can also see something like scarves. Uh yeah yeah, it's like scarves. In uh-huh. the inside time, you know, the. The beauty standard is like you have the uh, plum figure is beautiful, mm-hmm. and so they put on the, the scarves uh-huh. to m- make them look much more beautiful uh-huh. when they walk around. So that is why I would call it a living fossil, right? Because you can see the history, you yeah. can see like the ethics in the past, like people. The aesthetics in the past was quite different from now. Now. Most people like like slim figures, very fit yeah. somehow. But in the past, in the Tang Dynasty, in the Tang Dynasty in the seventh century, right, ancient yeah. China, and they used to admire plumish bodies over there, right? Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. quite different. Yeah. yeah, and in this place, you can find this uh, have oh. king. This oh. culture is very different because this uh, this culture, it has a pornish. Pornish. Yeah. What is it? His hair, uh-huh. hairstyle. Uh huh. Yeah, it's different. So different. It is hairstyle is quite different. What is it? How is it different from any other hairstyle we see? Um, it's not the Chinese style. It's not Chinese style. It's yeah. not Chinese style. Yeah, what style know, that is? You know, in in Tang Dynasty, uh-huh. it's a very open period, uh-huh. and in that time, some minor, minority nationalities uh-huh. they came to chi- came to ch- came to China. Uh-huh. So China was very much like a like a hotpot. We have people from different ethnic backgrounds, yeah. right? Culture melt pots uh-huh. in that time, and uh, some of them mm-hmm. they act as the officials in that time, okay. the generals. And, and they could also work as they could also work as officials or yeah. like at yeah. top ranks, right? In the yeah. past, yeah, yeah, so even though they were from like a different country, they were foreigners. Were they foreigners? Yeah, they some of them. Uh, come from the place like today's Afghanistan, uh-huh. and from that place or all around that place. Okay, so they were from the Middle East, like somewhere from Afghanistan. You said just now, around and the they place, could yeah. also work as the officials in the court. Yeah, in, right. in the so court in that time. So this culture is quite different. Okay. This general, it's like the general in Tang Dynasty. Yeah. That is interesting. Now I understand why it is like the living history. You can see yeah. really what's happened in the past, and they were there, and they are still there now. For those who just tuned in, this is CGTN. We're broadcasting live in Longmen Grotto, and this place has been listed on the World uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2000. And of course, you can follow us on CGTN app. And don't forget to follow Longman Grottoes. You have your WeChat account, right? And then you can get more information on that definitely. And don't forget to leave your comments on Facebook, Twitter, and Weibo. And we'll get back to your questions as soon as possible, of course. And this series of program is called The Real Time China. We started the mammoth strip in China's capital, Beijing, and we travel all the way through the coastal city of Shenzhen, which is the frontier of China's reform and opening up 40 years ago. And of course, my colleagues have been broadcasting live in different parts of China. Don't forget, you can also go to our website and the CGTN app. You can find us there, the live streams, you can watch the replay as well. And don't forget to share our our podcast with our friends. And definitely, we're going to see you next time. See you. See you. See you next time.